Today's Falcon 9 launch from Vandenberg Air Force Base was postponed until Thursday. But what's more important than that is the payload that this rocket will be carrying. I'm Zach, this is Zach TV, and I think we should talk about that. Now, yes, it is always a sad day when a Falcon 9 launch gets canceled. According to this tweet from Elon Musk, it seems like the high altitude winds were just too much for it to handle, and it's better to be safe than sorry, which makes sense to me. And now, with that being said, let's take a look at the rocket and the cargo this thing is carrying. Let's start right off with the core that you can see here. This core is known as B1038.2, and it has been flown before, as you can see by the soot up and down the side. The last launch of this core was back in August of 2017. It flew fine and obviously landed pretty well. However, this core will not be recovered this time. It is outfitted with its grid fins, but it doesn't have its landing legs on it. So it looks like they might try to uh, do a controlled landing into the water, but that's just speculation. We don't know what's really going to happen. We do know, however, that this is a Block 3 core. It was the last Block 3 core that they manufactured, and it looks like this is going to be the last Block 3 to fly because they're already using the Block 4 cores. Those are the ones that we currently see landing. But even the day will come when those Block 4s go obsolete and the Block 5s start carrying people up into outer space. And next, let's look at this fairing on here. It doesn't look a lot different, but when you actually compare it to another standard fairing, you find that it is bigger than the original ones. And this fairing is known as fairing 2.0. The reason for the increase in size is not increased cargo capacity, but parachutes. It looks like they are going to try to recover these fairings. And with that nose costing $6 million, I'd want to try to recover it too. And to add fuel to these rumors, Mr. Steve, the ship that has been designed to catch fairings was seen leaving Los Angeles this morning and heading out to the ocean. So it looks like they will be trying to retrieve these and save a little bit more money. I'll tell you what, it's almost funny, isn't it? They go so high tech in relanding a rocket, but they're going to go out in the ocean and try to catch a fairing as it falls. This is something I have to see. But see, now we've covered two things that are really cool. The cargo's really neat too. The biggest part of the payload, the main reason this is going to space, is to launch what's known as the PAS satellite. This is a Spanish satellite that was developed by Airbus and will be operated by HISSAT, and that's the military wing of Spain's satellite program. While there's not a lot known about this satellite, it is said to have a synthetic aperture radar. This is going to allow it to image through clouds and generate images with a resolution of 25 centimeters Per pixel. And if you're shooting an image through a cloud and you can see that well, that's a pretty impressive satellite. But to me, what's more impressive is the two Starlink satellites that are catching a ride on this rocket as well. They're what's known as Microsat 2A and 2B. I know, catchy names, right? But these are the first two satellites of Elon Musk's space-based internet program. These are test satellites to make sure they link up well, what they could broadcast, what they could do, and make sure everything works properly before they put up their nearly 12,000 satellites into orbit to provide high-speed internet to the world. Those numbers cover the 4,425 geosynchronous orbiting proposed satellites that will sit somewhere around seven to 800 miles off the surface of the Earth and the other 7,500 satellites that are going to be closer to Earth. For an idea of how many that really is, right now, if you count all the dead satellites and live satellites in orbit, we're looking nearly 4,000 satellites up there. This will triple the number of satellites we have in orbit. When Starlink is finally up and running, it looks like they'll be able to provide better than one gig internet to the entire planet. And it looks like SpaceX's plan for right now is to get about 800 of these satellites in orbit and then start providing internet to North America and open more areas as they grow this mesh network of satellites. We don't have an exact price yet on what a receiver is going to cost or what service would cost through here, but it has been mentioned that the panel it would take to receive the signal is going to run somewhere between $100 and $300, but we won't really know until it hits the market. And as far as that goes, it looks like Elon is pretty confident that they'll have this system up and running by 2020. So maybe this will be the solution that guarantees net neutrality where our FCC couldn't. However, even though this did receive approval from the FCC, we have to see how far it can go because there are companies out there making a stink about putting this many satellites into orbit and what dangers it could cause for the things that are already up there and for our future space missions, which I have to admit is a pretty valid concern. 
I mean, we know space is huge, but we also thought you couldn't pollute the oceans. So what do you think? Is this a good idea to put this many satellites up in space? Or should we hold off on it and guarantee our future of space travel? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button. That's what will help my channel grow and sharing these videos would be a great help as well. My videos come out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you want to know when that happens, click that subscribe button. And with that being said, have fun and be safe.